Today we're going to look at um, the ideal gas law versus Van der, Wa Van der Waals equation. So the ideal gas law, it is assuming some ideal conditions. So there's a couple of assumptions, there's two assumptions. And the first assumption is that gases themselves occupy no space, meaning the particle itself. So when we think about uh, the gas in the room, I can't actually see the molecules of gas, but they're there. Um, but what we say is that a gas is basically little tiny particles whose volume is so small it's negligible, it doesn't matter. And then there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of empty space in between gas particles. So we usually don't worry about the volume of these individual particles. We, we ignore the fact that they're there when we calculate with the ideal gas law. Um, and so you can see like in a, in a large space, the volume of these tiny little spots doesn't really matter so much might matter more if, if those particles are compressed into a tinier area. Uh, we also assume that gases are independent of each other. So they have no attractions to each other. So if gases collide, they're just gonna bounce off of each other. That we think of them almost like super balls, just bouncing and continuing to bounce. And we know number two is not true. It's just an assumption. We know it's not true because if gases have zero attraction for each other, like water vapor gas, then water vapor molecules would never be able to become attracted to each other enough to turn into a liquid. When something was a gas, it would just always be a gas. It's not true. If you slow down particles of gases, they are attracted to each other. If you slow, down, slow them down enough, they attract, they stick together, and they turn into liquids. So the ideal gas law ignores the fact that molecules actually have some volume, and it ignores the fact that particles do have some attraction to each other so they can kind of clump up a little bit. So the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. Done. Van der Waals, on the other hand, here's Van der Waals. You have your pressure, um, and the, the pressure here, it's being adjusted by this factor A, and that's going to adjust for the attractions between particles. And then you have the volume, which is going to be adjusted by the volume of the particles by factor B. So Van der Waals has the corrections for these assumptions. Ugh. Okay. So if we're going to, you know, have two two different laws, we should probably we want to use this whenever we can, right? It's a pretty quick one to calculate, and it works for all ideal gases. We might want to know how can I tell if the gas is ideal or not. Um, for one thing, if you calculate the pressure using both, and it's the same pressure, you had an ideal gas. The quicker way to know is that we can see right here that when you have a low concentration of gas, the, the volume of the particles is less important. When you have a high concentration of gas, then the, the volume of the particles themselves becomes more important. Also, when you have a low concentration, the gases are farther away from each other. They're not going to have as much attraction. Here, there's going to be more attraction. So I can see here, too, that this factor, this correction, becomes bigger as the number of particles becomes bigger, or um, as the concentration as my moles per volume becomes bigger. So if this molarity of particles becomes larger, then this correction factor is larger. So volume is being, you're gonna subtract by n, so the volume ends up being corrected more if this number of particles is larger. So again, if we have a high concentration of particles, then these two factors matter more, and then we don't have an ideal gas. So the volume, so the volume of gas particles matters if you have a high concentration of particles, and the attraction matters in the same conditions because they're cramped close together. Another thing to look at for the attraction of gas particles, it depends on what type of gas you have, because different gases have different amounts that they're attracted to each other. For example, if you have helium, helium is a nonpolar gas, so it's not going to have much attraction between helium atoms. Um, and water is a polar molecule, so it has positives and negatives. So they're going to be more attracted to each other. So they're actually going to clump up more. At this point, we haven't talked about polar and nonpolar much. We haven't reviewed you on it. So if you ask us, is this polar, is this nonpolar, we'll tell you. Another thing to think about is, um, I'm saying this guy is nonpolar. Helium is nonpolar and it's small. Things that are large will end up having more attraction as well. So you can ask us, what are the type of attractions between these gases? And we can tell you helium, very low attractions, water, much larger. Okay, so we saw in the equation 
P is for pressure, number of moles, volume, volume again, number of moles, number of moles, gas constant, temperature. But there's this A and this B. And the place we get A and B is right here. A, they, they come from a table. There's going to be a chart. So somebody determined these values in a lab. So you figure out which gas are you using, and then you can have your A constant and your B constant. You just plug it in. So let's go ahead and calculate one. Let's find out if this truly is an ideal gas or not. So I have, um, what is the pressure of 5.5 moles of helium at 1.2 liters and 100 Kelvin? I'm going to use the ideal gas law first. So I'm looking for pressure. Right, so let's just do this to, well, here I'll say I've got PV equals NRT, and I'm looking for pressure, so I'm going to divide both sides by volume. Okay, so pressure is equal to NRT over V, so I can plug in 5.5 moles for my number of moles. I can plug in 0 0.0821 for my gas constant, that's liters, atmospheres per mole. Kelvin. Uh, temperature is 100 Kelvin. And it's all over the volume, and the volume is 1.2 liters. Okay. So you plug that in, and you'll end up getting 37.63 atmospheres. I'm going to round that to, ooh, I'm going to put a decimal here and pretend that problem had three, three right there. So two sig figs, two sig figs, three sig figs. I'm going to round that 37.63 to 38 atmospheres. So that's the pressure using the ideal gas law. Now let's look and see if this is an ideal gas or not. Right away I can tell you I have 5.5 moles and 1.2 liters. Um, I know one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure. This is only 100 Kelvin instead of um, 273, but still that 5.5 should be closer to um, one third of Actually, getting getting closer to maybe like 40. Yeah, should be closer to 40 liters. So that would be if it was um, standard pressure. So that's that means this is a very um, concentrated gas, right? It's being compressed quite a bit. I have a lot of moles and very little volume compared to a standard gas. So it's probably not going to be ideal. Um, okay, so I have my ideal gas law, or not my ideal, my van der Waals. So the van der Waals equation, let's go back and peek at it so you can see what I'm substituting into. I have the pressure, number of moles squared, times the A gas constant I get off the chart, divide by the volume squared. I'm going to multiply that by the volume minus the number of moles times the B constant I'll get off the chart, equals number of moles times gas constant times temperature. Ew. Okay. So when I get that, I have pressure plus 5.5. 5 moles squared times um, 0 0.03412, and that's liters squared atmospheres per mole squared. I took that straight off the chart. And this whole thing is going to be divided by the volume, the volume squared. So 1.2 liters squared. Okay, so that is that first term, and then multiply it by the volume with its correction. So that's 1.2 liters minus 5.5 moles times the B constant, which is 0 0.0237, and that's liters per mole. Okay, and that was all equal to NRT. So 5.5 moles times 0.08 Two one liters atmospheres mole Kelvin, but I'm running out of room on my smart board, times 100 Kelvin. I'm going to put the units up here. Liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Okay, and when you check units, um, so I've got liters per mole times mole, so I'm just going to have liters minus liters. The units of this term will just be liters is equal to, I have um, moles divided by moles, Kelvin divided by Kelvin. So this term will be liters times atmosphere. And the units for this thing are going to be, let's see, I've got mole squared divided by moles squared. And then I have liters squared over liters squared. 
So then I have atmospheres, and this is atmospheres. So this, this section right here, this term will be in atmospheres. All right. Woo. OK, so I end up getting P plus 0 0.7168 when I multiply all this stuff. And from here, I get 1.069. 65 liters, and from this term, I end up getting 45.155. Okay, so then I'm going to divide both sides by 1.0695 liters. 1.0695 liters. Okay, so those liters are going to cancel out, and then I'm going to subtract. 0 0.7168 atmospheres from both sides. So I'll take this whole thing and then subtract 0 0.7168 ATM. Okay, so then I've got some atmosphere amount minus atmosphere. So this is great because this whole thing is gone now and I'm left with pressure is equal to um, 41.5 atmospheres. Good, I like a unit of atmospheres for pressure. I'm gonna round that to two sig figs. 42 ATM. All right, so that made sense. This answer makes sense. It's not the same as what I got with the ideal gas law because I have this really concentrated amount, 5.5 moles for every 1.2 liters instead of one mole for every 22.4 liters when it's standard. So these are not ideal conditions. There's a high concentration of particles. At that high concentration, the volume of each molecule of gas makes, makes more of a difference. It starts to actually matter. There's too many gas particles. Plus, they're closer together, so they're more likely to attract to each other. But really, since the pressure increased versus what it would be, it's that volume of the gas making that van der Waals pressure higher than what it would be under ideal conditions. So this was a good gas to use the van der Waals equation with because it was so concentrated. The volume of the particles matters. Here's the part that you're going to enjoy, except for the fact you just watched all of this, didn't you? You just watched all that calculation. Okay, you need to know, you really need to know um, that the two assumptions the ideal gas law makes is that gas molecu molecules do not occupy space, and that gases are independent of each other, and they don't have attractions. You have to know that. You have to know that these assumptions become a problem when you have so many gas particles that their volume starts to matter or when the particles are highly polar that they start to attract to each other, or even if they're concentrated enough, they're more likely to be attracted. This is the big one, though, is polarity versus not. So if you have a polar gas, it's more likely to be attracted. If you have a high concentration of gas, the particle volume starts to matter. But other than that, you're going to like this. We're not going to ask you to calculate with the ideal gas, or with the, the van der Waals equation in any become. We're not going to test you on this because it doesn't come up very often. Um, it is good to be able to substitute in, and you can, you can muscle through that algebra if you need to. But the big thing, if you know your, your assumptions and when it matters, you're good.